Yesterday, the Suicide Squad killed the Justice League NDA drop so we can finally talk about how we felt during the closed alpha. The footage itself and everything is still under NDA, but throughout this video I'll showcase the gameplay trailers which is pretty much the same thing I got to play. Starting out, I really enjoyed everything I saw so far in the Suicide Squad game. Let me say too, I was really impressed with the closed alpha because of its length and how smooth it ran compared to some closed or open betas I've played in the past. I practically had no issues the entire time and was getting a solid frame rate throughout it. With that out the way, let's talk about what you really want to hear, which is the gameplay. At the beginning of the closed alpha, you go through a pretty lengthy tutorial of each character to kind of learn how the traversal work, what weapons they use, and any abilities they have. Harley Quinn felt as I expected Harley to feel. She is pretty much the most normal character in a way, where you have the grappling hook and a bat to hit enemies up close. Deadshot felt great, but his traversal can be a little bit interesting to master. I'm sure over time it will feel better, but the jetpack can be a little tough to get down. Captain Boomerang actually really surprised me, and he felt great. He's super agile and quick to move towards enemies, and he might be a close second character for me. Finally, you got King Shark, who has been my personal favorite so far. He is chonky but I love it. He's got the feel of the Hulk where you can jump real high and jump really far. And from what we've seen in the trailers too, I think this is just the beginning for the traversal as you'll be able to upgrade them as you continue, it seems like. Going into weapons, Harley Quinn uses an SMG. Deadshot uses a sniper, obviously. Captain Boomerang has an SMG or a shotgun, I think. And then King Shark has a LMG, light machine gun, or a shotgun. I'm pretty sure it's interchangeable between them and they can all use different weapons, but that's kind of what they start out with. During the closed alpha, I was able to get a good amount of loot to swap out as far as weapons but it was still so early on so i didn't think i could see a huge difference in how each gun played i got maybe like one or two legendaries but at that point the alpha ended like 10 minutes later one thing that I was really impressed with or I thought was really cool was the ability where you can change your loadout to copy a friend that you have. So for instance, if your friend has a really good gun with some great perks equipped to their dead shot, you can go to that friend in your friends list and select it and copy their dead shot to your own solo dead shot. So that way you gain those benefits and they'll play more similar to how your friend plays in your own game. Kind of like the pawn system from Dragon Dragon's Dogma, but on a smaller scale, I guess. Now, as far as gunplay and combat it itself, this game has a ton of things going on during combat. It can be a little much at times. It's hard to spot all the counter shot options, but when you do get the counter shot and you go in for the melee kill, it does feel pretty good, honestly. I was actually impressed with how simple but good it felt for pretty much all the characters. Now, one thing I've seen a lot during the last few days was people talking about the UI. Personally, I had no issues with the eye during the alpha. I don't know if I'm just used to it or if it's just really isn't as bad as what people have made it out to be. I think it might be the latter, but personally, I was fine with it. And if something really bothers me, I'm sure there's an option just to disable it in the settings, which from what I remember, there was a good amount of customization options that you had for settings. The last thing I wanted to talk about was some light story elements and the world of Metropolis itself. This city has freaking huge. I'm not kidding with how big it is. Even with the alpha, I was still impressed. It took me about three hours, I think, just to finish all the story content. And even during all that, I could have explored the city even more than I already had. Every moment with the entire team of Harley, Shark, Deadshot, and Boomerang honestly was hilarious. On top of that, every encounter with the Flash, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, and Batman himself was above what I expected it to be. If you haven't played it yet, just wait until you get to see what it's like to be on the opposing side of Batman. It is not fun but it is great. The game has tons of areas too that are like interactable museums where you, it tells you about the characters, the world, the events that happen and more. And personally, I love that kind of stuff in games. So yeah, if you, if you couldn't tell already, I really enjoyed my time with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And honestly, sitting down talking about it all through this has made me even more excited, especially because how close we are to the release. I don't know how the launch is going to be for this game, but I'm 
I'm still excited either way, and I'm hoping for the best. I think this game is going to be a surprise for a lot of people, but at the same time, I think it's going to go through some of the same issues that Gotham Knights had, despite it being a completely new thing and not even related to that game. I mean, this one is actually set in the Arkhamverse and takes place five years after the previous one. But yeah, for right now, that's gonna be pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and we will be doing a full playthrough of this entire game on release, live streamed. So if you wanna be there for that, again, subscribe and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.